Hi everyone, uh, this is Beth. Hi, I'm Linda um, from Pace. I, I think some others may be joining us, but we want to make sure we get started since we only have an hour together. Uh, can everyone hear okay? Great, okay. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, we know it's a busy time of year and certainly busy times of day for our people joining from all over. We appreciate those of you who are putting off breakfast and dinner to join us. And you, hopefully you can see the agenda on the big screen here. Uh, our goal for today, our main goal, is to start sharing some of our student accomplishments with ePortfolio. And we have uh, several recordings planned uh, from Albertus Magnus, um, from Siggy Jacob, I'm sorry we left you off the agenda here, and perhaps we'll have some others uh, join as well. And we have some samples from Pace too. We also want to talk a little bit about our mug presentation at ABLE this year. Our, our proposal was accepted for a poster session, so we'll be pre we will be presenting on July 16th, which is the Tuesday, I think, in the afternoon during the poster sessions. And uh, we'd like to have as many people from this group join us, uh, either <laughs> in person or virtually. We're not quite sure how the poster sessions are going to run this year, um, but we'd like to get input from everybody if possible and include your work, the work that we're doing through these meetings and through Facebook and just through collaborations in general. So we'll talk about that. And then we'll also hear from Christina uh, about Mahara 1.5, which has been released. And we've been playing with it a little bit. And we're eager to learn more and definitely eager to upgrade. Um, so that's our agenda for today. I think everyone has, uh, if you haven't already, if you don't mind just posting a brief introduction in the chat area. Keith, I believe this will be recorded. Um, can you verify that, or are you recording? Already is. Great. Keith is our technical wizard. We want to send a big thank you to Keith Landa from SUNY Purchase, who uh, is handling all the technical details, and this is no small feat, especially for this meeting, because he's incorporating video from a variety of formats to be able to um, share it with all of you today. So thanks so much. Okay. So um, with that, we want to start with our student showcase. And uh, I know at Pace we're so proud of seeing our student accomplishments and we end each semester with a student contest. And, um, but we thought it would be fun to share some of our students' accomplishments uh, virtually this, you know, through our mug group and so we can get an idea of what's happening at all the institutions. And I believe we're going to start with Garrett from Albertus Magnus. And Garrett, this is uh, really exciting for us to see because I think this is your first full year with ePortfolios. Uh, so we're, we're very excited to see what you've accomplished. And so with that, I will turn, that it, over I will turn it over to Keith. I mean, I'll turn it over to Garrett. I'll turn it over to Garrett, and, Garrett, and, and he may be enjoying having trouble, trouble hearing, hearing, so perhaps connect this to around. I'm going to mute my microphone. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Garrett Dell from Albertus Magnus College. And uh, along with two other instructors, um, we teach the entire freshman class here at Albertus uh, ePortfolio techniques and how to kind of integrate it with other courses they're taking in their first year program. We're headed into our third year with it. Um, we have about 120 freshmen. Um, not too many of them complain. <laughs> they all see the value of the tool. Uh, a good portion of them do. and. Um, you know, our focus has been to kind of make this a holistic experience. Uh, it's been a little bit uh, difficult figuring out how to integrate their work in ePortfolio with uh, courses in um, tougher disciplines. But, you know, today I have three different student showcases uh, to, to demonstrate to everyone. Um, these three students uh, wanted to just share with all of you. They took time out to, to say, yes, I'll do this. I sent out a mass email. And you'll see that they're different. Um, Matthew's is about five minutes, um, and both Victoria and Amanda's are around two and a half minutes or so. Um, Matthew is a freshman, Amanda is a freshman, and Victoria is a senior who used it to go into her um, grad school. Um, so I think maybe we'll watch each one and then um, if you have any questions about what anyone has done there, I'll be happy to talk about it. There's nothing too complicated about it. Um, and I think just 
kind of listen to their voice talking about it, and maybe we can learn something different from it. So, yeah, let's start with that first link. I can't see exactly who it is, but we'll see when it's up there. Okay, so how I utilized my ePortfolio was applying to an interactive communications program at Quinnipiac University in Hamden, Connecticut. Part of my application was putting together a portfolio of my best work while being at Albertus and also my professional work. So I utilized ePortfolio to put together an About Me, just a brief page talking about uh, who I am as a communications professional, what my expectations are, and just a little bit about myself. And as you can see here, I inserted two images, and there's all my contact information listed. I also included personal recommendations with links. As you can see, you can create different pages and almost create a little Facebook page using Mahara about yourself. So here's my resume view. And if you scroll down, you can see my whole resume. I also create a portfolio of internship items, things that I produced while I've been at the chamber. Um, as you can see, I uploaded a video that I created from YouTube. Um, I'll play a little bit of that. And you can see the whole video in length on my ePortfolio. Another unique thing about ePortfolio is that you can also upload different PDFs or documents. So this is something else that I created while being at the chamber that you can access right from my portfolio. ePortfolio is a great tool just to show people what you're capable of doing and what you've done in classes, at your job, at your internship, so as you can see, I have several pages here that highlight all the different areas of communications that I've studied while being at Albertus, as well as my internship. And as I noted before, you can open up all of these documents just by clicking on them. So essentially, ePortfolio has replaced having to print things out and you know, stack them up into a manila envelope and hand them to someone, which oftentimes can get lost or disorganized here. It's all central. It's all in one location. Uh, this is some photography that I did for photojournalism at a Yale hockey game that I was able to upload. There are just so many great tools of ePortfolio that I highly recommend using. And as a result of all the different pages that you're seeing, I have been admitted to the Interactive Communications Program at Quinnipiac. OK, so that was Victoria. And uh, maybe we could just move on to the next one, unless anybody has any questions about that. Yes, welcome she is a my, great promoter. This is a place. This is a place. Um, line where I can have an online resume of everything that I've been doing here at Albertus. There are certain pages that tell about me. One of these pages is called my sandbox page. As you can see here, this is a, all different things about me. It shows that I like country music and I have pictures of the Bridgestone Arena, which I went to last year um, in Nashville, which is one of my favorite places. Um, you can see here some words to describe me, determined, organized, generous, hardworking, conscientious, caring, shy, etc. Um, it gives you a little bit of the background information that I'm from East Haven, Connecticut, and I love country music and Zumba, and a little bit about my employment history, um, working at TJ Maxx, and then just a video here of one of my favorite country music videos. If you go on to my written communications page, you can see here was the things that I uploaded for my Introduction to Insight course. Um, these are a few documents that we had to submit on here for our class. 
And we also have an information literacy page where we have a text box about what we thought information literacy meant, and then the one-page description on it. So as you can see, the pages all vary with different things from well, in general information about me to all the different academics for each class that I've done. Hello, my name is Matthew Sheehan. I'm a freshman here at Albertus Magnus College, and I, I'm here to talk to you about ePortfolio. Uh, what you could see here is my profile page. Uh, this is where you could upload a, uh, basic information about yourself, uh, a few pictures um, to show what you're interested in, and also the links connecting your um, profile page to your other pages. The first page I want to show you is written communication. This page, as you can see, uh, has uploaded uh, documents and artifacts of my uh, essays and other projects um, from my uh, first semester classes. Uh, this is good because other people could view your work, such as employers and fa uh, other fa faculty members, and also uh, it gives you time to reflect and to observe your growth and progress on these works. What I also want to show you, and what I feel is the, the best aspect of ePortfolio, is your sandbox. The sandbox is a place where you could upload uh, video movies, uh, pictures, and other links to show other people uh, what your major interests are. As you can see on my sandbox, my major interests that I wanted, wanted to uh, portray to other people is my uh, uh, paranormal uh, investigations that I have done in the past and also my, my, uh, my group, which I have founded. Uh, which is called Ouroboros Paranormal Investigation Association. Um, as you can see here, uh, I typed some basic information about the group, and on the left of the screen, you could observe uh, different links uh, going to websites about uh, paranormal um, interests, and on the right, uh, I included some videos. To conclude, you could also upload uh, different uh, artifacts and uh, voice recordings onto your ePortfolio to uh, make small presentations about what the page could be about. Uh, the one you see on my profile page right now is uh, just a brief uh, overview of my first semester here at Albertus Magnus College. Hello and welcome to my ePortfolio. My name is Matthew Sheehan. I live in a small town called Wilkett, which is located in Connecticut. Currently, I'm attending Albertus Magnus College in New Haven, Connecticut. This college attracted my attention due to its small community campus and experienced professors. So far, I'm interested in studying history as a major, and I also partake in many volunteer organizations, which could be viewed in my resume section. Also on ePortfolio, uh, there is a uh, resume which you could uh, fill out. As you can see right here, as I was talking about, is my resume, which you could constantly update. You could type up a brief introduction about yourself in this resume on ePortfolio. You could add in education and employment history, which everybody would be eager to look at, especially future employers, as well as achievements. Goals that you may have in uh, uh, your college career and skills. And uh, that's pretty much uh, the basic stuff for your portfolio. It's a great program and I recommend it to anybody.
Thank you. Okay, those were my three videos. I just wanted to um, end by saying um, there was a question about the pages and, and templates that we have set up. You know, part of what we've tried to do is um, match what students do in their courses um, with general education uh, learning outcomes. So for example, you've heard some students refer to oral communication page and written communication. And so they're taking those kind of key skills that they're learning in their general education program, of which there are about seven, and then taking all the classes that they um, take and, and taking key assignments that fulfill those outcomes. So we provide them with simple templates for each of those general education outcomes, and then they're free to create their own. So, um, so yes, that's been the first year of our experience here. much. That was so impressive. Um, you, you have done a lot in a year. It was a nice range that you shared with us. Linda and I are just uh, having a side conversation yeah. here. We're really impressed. And it was great to see, I think Matthews was a first year student. Mm -hmm. And we've been, you know, we've in, been encountering some resistance from some of our first year uh, University 101 faculty. You know, they're saying that students at this stage don't have enough yet to create an e-portfolio. And, you know, Matthew really proves that's all wrong. So. <laughs> So uh, it's great, and we'd love to be able to share this more widely at PACE if you do get the student's permission. Um, congratulations on a, on a great year with ePortfolios. Thanks for sharing that. I, Linda, do you want to? I just have a question. Do, did the faculty who are teaching these courses um, with the general education outcomes all use ePortfolios or encourage students to use ePortfolios? How much of a buy-in do you have from the general education faculty? Great question. Um, yes, it. Uh, so it's part of a larger uh, Davis Foundation grant, and um, so along with two other instructors, um, I teach the ePortfolio course. But then there's a group of about uh, ten or twelve first-year faculty who have um, uh, accepted stipends uh, for participation in the project, and um, for the most part have um, really latched onto the tool and have have found it. You know, tough to learn because at first everybody has the tendency to think of it as an add-on, but then see it as something that's uh, irreplaceable. So, um, yeah, there are about 10 or 12, and uh, we actually have a follow-up with them next week about how the year went. Garrett, we want to turn it over to Siggy. Uh, um, I'm not sure if Keith has your links or if you're sharing your desktop. But if you'd like to share your sample that, or samples, that would be great. Siggy, you should see a share my screen option now on the on the yeah, front. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I can. I. I. In fact, I see that, uh, and I'm going to share my students. Uh, one of my students. You. I'll just see whether this works. Um, window. Okay. Here we go. Okay. You see that now? Yes. Um, well, it says it's being shared, but I can't see anything. Can you see the shared desktop? Okay. And I go back. Okay. So, um, what I'm going to show you today is um, an example of two students. And um, um, when I was still in service, um, I always had asked my students to present their um, views uh, themselves when there was an opportunity. Uh, but now I will have to do this. Um, the background of these uh, e-portfolios is uh, the practical training of my students. They are from a vocational school. And in the second year, they had to do um, six weeks tr practical training. And previously, they always had to write uh, their report in Word format, which was very boring for them. So this was a very good opportunity for me to start with Mahara and with ePortfolio and giving them a really good opportunity um, to switch over to uh, Word to uh, um, um, ePortfolio. Um, I'm going to show you two examples. Uh, the first example is a student uh, called Etienne. And Etienne um, has written quite a lot of entries and very long texts. I would 
just scroll um, down a little bit. Um, I'll just switch to the view of Adobe to see whether you can. Can you hear me? And can you see the presentation? Can you see the view? Can you just give me a yes? Yeah. OK, good. OK, so I can go on like that. Good, perfect. And uh, they were asked, there were certain uh, things asked to do, um, um, which they were asked to do in text fields. For example, an introduction on the company where they work. This is the Einleitung about the Betrieb. Then why they had chosen this uh, company, what their expect expectations were, and finally, what their role was in the company. Uh, in the end, they had to write about how happy they were and whether their expectations had been met and uh, what school, what uh, what they had needed in the practical training, what they had learned at school. And that's why in the beginning um, of the view, you always have these text fields and they remain there. And here you can see that they have integrated um, um, blogs. Uh, they, I had asked them to write a blog entry for every single um, day of their practical training. So I will just go down to the first day. Um, you see? OK. This is the first day, day one. And as you know, um, like in the normal blogs, it uh, always the, the, the next entry is always the last entry is always on top. Uh, what this student has done, he has integrated a lot of pictures about his um, about the company, and he has also uh, integrated um, a picture gallery. I hope I can switch to this picture gallery, where he has put a documentation of every single day. I just pick it uh, pick a day randomly. And as you can see here, instead of describing everything in words, he has integrated um, a picture gallery where he um, shows what he was doing. So he has done this for every single day. And this was not my idea. This was their idea. They had figured out that it was nicer to um, integrate an external um, Jimdo page into their Mahara, which I found was a great idea. So this student has written very, very much, and every single day he had a picture gallery. So the German teacher was very happy with this one because um, he had written so much. A uh, second example I want to show you, well, there is there are lots of entries, but basically it's always the same. What he has also done, uh, all the papers he got for the, for the practical training, for example, there's a checklist which they had to uh, fill out. There is the assessment, the end assessment, which he has put in here. Let me just see whether I can open that. He has put it in as a GPEG. Yeah, not very good quality, but you can see um, he has integrated that. OK, I will go back to his view. Um, he has also integrated a picture and uh, some profile information and some information on the on the company and some documents. The second example I would like to show you is very different. Very different. I just have to go back. Okay, here we go. Sunny. Okay, this student is from Thailand, and his German, neither his German nor his English were very good, so he was not very uh, keen on writing a lot. So I'll just go to his practical training. And from first sight, you can al already see that this is very, very different. He has also a two column uh, view. On the left hand side, he has integrated the pictures. There's also a slideshow which has integrated here about the company where he worked, which I found very nice. 
And he has also integrated, like the other student, a picture gallery where he describes and where he um, has taken pictures and where he does screenshots or screencasts about uh, the things he did during the practical training. I would like just like to take you to one of these practical training days. You can see that his entries of a single day are very, very short. Um, personally, I like this much better because um, the explanations of what he did um, can be found in his uh, screen cards. Let me just see. Okay, I'll just go to the picture gallery again. It's the same. It's also Jim Do. And for every single day, he has created a separate screencast. There's one where he had gone to a um, printing company. Yeah, I found this, I, this one I find especially interesting. Let me just see what he did there. Okay. And I personally find this much more um, um, interesting and um, relevant than describing in long sentences uh, what he was doing there. So the German teacher was not very happy with this one because he said there was not enough text in that. So you see every single day he has done um, screencast, which I found very nice. Okay, I think um, that's about all I wanted to show you today. Um, it's a pity that I do not, I, I'm not teaching anymore and that I don't have the opportunity to work, to continue working with these students. It was really great fun and this was the first step I did with them, uh, with Mahara. The next step was that uh, we created a learning diary in, um, in English. Uh, we had a, a virtual course in our virtual classroom in Moodle and all the assignments um, they uh, put into their virtual, um, in their, into their virtual um, diary into, their, into Mahara. So at the end of the school year, each of them had a different um, uh, di English diary and it was very nice to see the, the various outcomes of uh, this one year. So if you have any questions, I'm, I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, the ages of the students, they were um, from 17 to 18, 19. Um, this was a, a requirement was that they had to write um, a report on their practical training, but it was the first time uh, that uh, they could do it with Mahara. Yeah, thank you. So I hand back the mic to you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Klaus Himmel, he's very, very good. Yes, that's right. Okay, thank you. I hand back the little head over to my kitchen and to the asparagus. Uh, yeah, I've got uh, control back. Hi, my name is Joanne DeMarco. I'm a graduate student at Pace University, and I wanted to show you my ePortfolio. I'm starting off um, by showing you my profile page. Uh, this is how you can view my profile. 
and I will get into my ePortfolio now. This is my introduction page where you can see um, my color bar, a picture of me, and I've written a little about myself as well as included a wordle about me. I have also included some reflections about ePortfolio in general and a little more information about my career goals, words I live by, um, a great fortune that I came across, and some of the social media sites that I participate on. And now I will show you my academic materials. I am a returning student. I had not been in college for about 20 years, so I'm a little atypical in that sense. So I had to go back in time for some of my materials. But I did include a copy of my degree, my undergraduate degree. And on the left side, I ad actually manually added my courses um, as an undergraduate. And I did not allow ePortfolio to pull them in because that actually wasn't an option. I included a picture of my, my college where I received my undergraduate degree. I went on to talk a little bit about an internship experience I had as an undergraduate. I also included um, my application essay and a PowerPoint presentation that I had done for class. Uh, right now I'm in my second semester, so unfortunately I don't have a lot of acad academic material to post, but I will be continuing to add th to that as time goes on. And the course listings on the left, these are the courses that I have taken at PACE. And that's going to continue to populate as I continue in the program. I'll now show you my professional preparation resume page. And this is my page where I, I do have my resume both as a Word document and as a PDF. Uh, I did do a nice graphic here, which is the companies I have worked for or interned at. A lot of people seem to like that. Uh, I did put in some of my computer proficiencies and critical job skills, so that's clearly visible. I am a member of a few professional groups, and I put that on the left side. And I did include a picture of uh, myself and a friend uh, when I was working for IBM in the early 1990s. And now I'll show you my recommendations page. It was a little plain here on the left side, so I included a little graphic. Uh, here is a PDF link to um, a few of my IBM award letters, and here's a PDF link to my most recent uh, employee review. So those are there for people to see. And I did include uh, text of some recommendations that I received from former coworkers and um, from the Dean of the College of Health Professions here at Pace University. On my showcase page, um, I've also talked a little bit about my, my work here at PACE. Um, I do work for PACE. I am the assessment uh, coordinator for the College of Health Professions. So I'm just talking a little bit about what I do. And I work a lot with Qualtrics. Um, Qualtrics is a tool, an online tool, uh, which you can create and manage surveys. And I spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, these PNGs that uh, you can open up are screenshots of Qualtrics. I also have an interest in photography. I've been taking photos since I was a child. So I uploaded uh, some of my photos and converted them to a, a YouTube file so that people can just click the button and see a small sample of my photos. Um, there are no video. I'm sorry, it's just video. There actually isn't any music or narration behind it. Um, I do keep a blog uh, as part of my ePortfolio, which I tend to update fairly regularly. And you'll see those posts on the left side. I also subscribe to the Huffington Post social media feed. That's on the left side, and that gets updated regularly. Um, back in November, I did have a letter to the editor published in the Northern Westchester Examiner. So I scanned that in, and that's there for everyone to see as when they view my portfolio. And that's really all there is to my ePortfolio. I do uh, intend on keeping it updated and um, continuing to use it throughout my time here as a graduate student. Thank you. Great job, Joanne. This is Michelle Pulaski-Bailing in Pleasantville. Uh, I just wanted to add 
something to uh, the presentation here. This is Joanne's a graduate student. ePortfolios are required for all of the graduate students in Media and Communication Arts program. Uh, so this is basically the culmination of a semester's worth of work uh, to create a professional portfolio uh, using Mahara. Thank you. You wanna? Oh yeah. My name is Megan Burke, and I'd like to introduce Kirsten's ePortfolio from Pace University. Uh, she's a senior nursing major student, and Kirsten showcases her goals, skills, activities, and qualifications through images, videos, blog posts, and text. And she will take you through her ePortfolio pages now. Hi everyone, my name is Kirsten Albrecht and I'm a senior nursing major at Pace University in Pleasantville, New York. This is my ePortfolio. Uh, we start on the introduction page where I have uploaded a picture of myself. I have also listed skills, both non-nursing and nursing, um, that I have found relevant. Um, you see my background information, which I have provided, and my goals both short-term and long-term. I also have an overall reflections section that identifies how ePortfolio has benefited me as a graduating senior. Now on to the academic materials page. Here there is a list of um, your courses that you've taken on the right hand side from freshman year all the way to senior year, so that's very helpful. I've also decided to show off my writing enhanced courses by giving a brief description of what a writing enhanced course is, and I've also listed the writing enhanced courses that I have taken and I'm currently taking. I then go on to list my nursing related, related projects and papers, and then I have another column for other papers and projects that I have found relevant um, and show me up as a more well-rounded individual. Now to the co-curricular and extracurricular activities page. Okay. So on the co-curricular and extracurricular activities page, I have uploaded many pictures of my clinical groups. Um, I recently came back from a community health research project in Ayapal, Nicaragua. I've done a lot of community service activities, so I have pictures of all of those events. And I also have a picture of me and my friends from our induction to Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society. Up here on the right corner, I also have had the opportunity to complete blog posts. So I have a precepting blog for my nursing experiences, and I have a motivational blog, which I like to add to on my leisure time. I also complete video logs for the Lean Hard School of Nursing, and they're titled The Life of a Pace Nursing Student. I have up here Volume 1 and Volume 2. And to move on to the professional preparation and resume page. Okay, so here is the professional preparation and resume page. Um, I have chosen to list the my summary of qualifications. Uh, I also have taken a screenshot of my resume and added it to my ePortfolio on this page um, so that employers can see my resume. And I also have provided a resume downloadable file. Um, so at their convenience, at anyone's convenience, they can download a copy of my resume. Now onto the showcase page. Okay, so here I have uploaded a lot of pictures um, showcasing my accomplishments, my certifications, um, and the things that I find help me define uh, myself as an individual. Um, I have preventing sexual ha harassment certification complete completion. Um, 
I have my National Residence Hall Honorary Association. I also put in an evaluation from my staff that I received because I think that's important. And some certificates. I also have motivational quotes and my organizations here as well. So that is my ePortfolio. I hope you all enjoyed this navigation through and thanks for listening. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks to um, Megan and Michelle Birch and uh, Michelle Pulaski Bailing and uh, of course to all the students. Uh, not just from PACE, but from uh, all the schools here that were represented that's really made the showcase great. Uh, I hope we can do more of this in the future. It's yeah. certainly the reward of this group to be able to see what's accomplished from everyone's hard work. Uh, yeah, I agree, Christina. We'll have to have another student showcase uh, someday. This, this was great. Uh, I want to take the remainder of the time, though, and, and turn it over to you, Christina, because I know we're all so eager to learn more about the latest version of Mahara. Uh, so if that's okay, we'll, we'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Beth. Um, I hope everyone can hear me all right. Okay, perfect. Um, so this slide might look quite familiar to you, actually, because that was the first one I used um, in the January MAC meeting, in the last MAC meeting. And since then, a lot of things have actually happened, uh, because the future is not near anymore, but it's actually here because we have released Mahara 1.5 um, just last week on Tuesday. And um, that included altogether 84 new features and over 300 bug fixes. So lots of new things have gone into this release. And um, Dominic Aranjan from Switzerland, he actually also calculated how many new features were uh, community contributions and uh, directly requested by users. And that was um, 64 altogether. And then 84 were some um, new features uh, that fall into categories that we stumbled upon during um, the creation of new features that were requested or that um, had to be done for security or authentication purposes or that we wanted to add, it, uh, to add ourselves uh, within the Lead Mahara team at Catalyst. And so from this list, you see kind of in which areas new features have been created. And so you can imagine that um, once we had the release out, or even already before then, I felt like a kid in a candy store and surrounded by all this beautiful chocolate and candy and, and whatnot. And um, because there are just so many features that I could talk about, but that would take hours. And so I just wanted to briefly um, point you to five of them, because I think they're really awesome and might also be very useful for you when you switch. And the first one, they're not really in any particular order because it's quite difficult for me to find an order since I like um, pretty much all new features. Um, but the, the one that I'd like to show you or at least point you to is the Save iframe feature. That means that you can now pretty much embed any iframe without having to write a specific filter. All that needs to be done is uh, for your technician uh, to put some code into um, into yeah, into a codex, um, into the actual code. In Mahara 1.6, we will have um, an admin interface for that so that you can um, put that in more easily. A second very cool feature is browser ID because that could replace in the future some more complicated authentication methods like single sign on or um, connection to, to other systems that do not require that you're logged in immediately because browser ID allows you to log in with your email address in not just one system, but any system that is browser ID supported. And um, that is a development by Mozilla, and we were one of the first applications that um, had browser ID support implemented, and it's working quite nicely. Really other cool new things are themes. We have a configurable theme, making it much easier for smaller installations who one just want to change the colors and also the logo of the site to do that now from the admin interface. And for those um, working with younger students, there's also a primary school theme. So 
that was created for the uh, for my portfolio that's called that and that for the Ministry of Education here in New Zealand and the, um, the Ministry of we open sourced it together with the Ministry allowing us to have it in there and that showcases nicely uh, what you can also especially do on the dashboard page with the dashboard image and also how to incorporate more icons into the navigation bar. Copy collections is also a great feature um, that was financed by um, Rocky View Schools and that allows us now to copy any collection that you have shared with users and not just pages. And last but not least, um, there's also a drop-down built-in navigation now so that you do not have to use the, the um, navigation bar you are used to, but can now also easily just switch to a drop-down menu. If you have not yet had the opportunity to install it on your own server, you can, as of today, go to demo.mahara.org because we updated it um, just yesterday, thanks to our team in the UK who put it on their server. And um, you should be able to see most of the new features in there. Um, it could still be at the moment that you might see the 1.4 version because we are in the process of having the DNS switched over. So that is still in the making, but most of you will hopefully already see the new dashboard page and also the new home page where there are new icons. And I'll add some more information on the page, which actually then also says that this is now 1.1. Now, exploring some of these features might actually be a bit uh, tricky because you don't know where to find them and can't really make it out from the visual items or bug reports. And therefore, just take a look at the manual. Um, it has been updated to 1.5 in manual that mahara.org now also points to the 1.5 version. And if you go to the index and scroll down to the section N, new in Mahara 1.5, um, then you'll see all the new features that users will see that needed to be documented in, uh, for, in the user manual. And you can easily then click on the links there and um, yeah, just go there. So on the way, the manual is also a new feature of 1.5. It exists also for 1.4 now. And you can also download it um, as PDF file and even put it onto a tablet computer as EPUB file and put it there into your reader. Keith, thank you very much for putting the manual link into the chat window. And um, all, this, all these new features have been made possible through the Bahara community for various contributions from many, many users. As you can see um, in the release notes, I'll share the link to the, the release notes um, just in a bit once I'm done. And so we've had people who reported bugs, people who put wish lists up, people who translated um, the the words that we have there in English, people who did security fixes, who helped with the reviewing, and also who wrote the actual code. So it's lots of things going on. And if you have any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Here are my email addresses and uh, or email address and Twitter. And also please join us on mahara.org, discuss the new features and report bugs or expand them for with other wish list items, and then also discuss more how you're using it and um, so that we also get an idea about it. So that's pretty much it from me. Thank you so much, Christina. I'm wondering if anyone has questions uh, for Christina that you'd like to ask now? Uh, Christina, this is Keith. Yep. We currently have um, we currently have Moodle 2.2 fully integrated with Mahara 1.4, so that we can easily transfer materials from Moodle to Mahara and submit Mahara portfolio views as assignments in Moodle. Um, we plan to upgrade Mahara to 1.5 soon, and then. We'll be upgrading to Moodle 2.3 after it comes out in June. Have you seen any issues uh, with uh, Mahoodle integrations as you go from uh, one version of uh, Mahara to another? Um, no, not really, because everything pretty much stays the same. That also answers uh, your question, Mika. 
um, when you upgrade, there is no need to re-upload your pages and to reformat your pages because everything still stays the same. What uh, what you should, what your IT technician should definitely do, do it on a test installation first. Um, we've had a couple of reports um, which had uh, where users of where yeah, IT staff had difficulties with um, MySQL databases. So we'll probably bring out 1.51 um, sometime soon to resolve that issue. Unfortunately, not, um, they hadn't tested it during the release candidate. Otherwise, we would have um, been able to solve that problem probably already for the stable release. But um, Richard has posted in the forums a couple of in, um, pieces of information of um, how to fix the issue already temporarily so that you don't have to wait until um, the new minor release is out. So that should already help. Um, in regard to Mahoodle, I don't um, have any information about things not working out because as long as the public key stays the same, um, then everything is just uh, stays connected. Otherwise, you would have to change the key and now 1.5 allows for the regeneration of a public key so that you could also more easily connect it to another Moodle. And I'm trying to find the notes for you. But you can also put them in there. Thank you so much, Christina. Yes. Uh, I welcome. see we just have a couple. Oh, <laughs> thanks. I see we just have a few minutes left. And what I'm proposing is that for our uh, mug presentation at April poster session, uh, perhaps we get a group together to plan that in early June. Uh, I don't know how how that sounds to everyone here. And I'm not sure how many of you are planning to attend in person, but like I said before, whether you're attending in person or not, it'd be great to get your input and uh, your slides, your links, your contributions so that we could kind of show the richness of the mug group even if we're not all there uh, physically. And for those who are there physically, uh, I'd like to propose that maybe we get together socially, maybe for breakfast or coffee one, one day, um, just so, oh, thanks, Garrett. I know Garrett and Christina will be there, um, so that we could get to know each other a little bit. Um, so maybe we can coordinate schedules, both to plan the uh, June and then also to plan a kind of face-to-face -face meetup. Uh, looking beyond that, I know Keith is planning uh, perhaps the Mahara Moodle event in July. Um, Keith, I'm not sure if you want to say anything about that. Oops. Yeah, Christina, we're thinking the same thing. Yeah, I'm trying to work on it. Things have been crazy here, but um, I know that uh, we've got some interest in from uh, SUNY um, um, SUNY Delhi, who has hosted the Moodle Mood in the past, to uh, present uh, at our session. And I was going to uh, send out some emails hitting up some of you to either present uh, virtually or in person. Uh, we're going to be limited to a one-day event because of the housing situation on campus this, uh, this summer. But um, now that I've got the ePortfolio Institute's um, out and advertised to faculty, I can turn my attention to the Mahoodlemoot uh, planning and really start beating the bushes a little bit more. Okay, thanks, Keith. Please count on us. We'd be happy to help you um, plan or present or do anything we can since we're very close by. Uh, and that sounds great. Um, so we'll look forward to more information about that. We'll continue to use Facebook as uh, the mode to share our updates. And Keith, if it's okay with you to share the, this recording. And I'm excited about the Digo, uh, the way using Digo a little bit more to perhaps share some of these links. Um, we'll have to experiment with that on this end and kind of see how that goes. But that might also be a helpful way to share information. Uh, does anyone else have any remaining questions, comments? Yeah, thanks. I want to, even though the, most of the students aren't with us, I do want to uh, share a big thank you to all the students. I hope uh, the people here can pass that along, how much we enjoyed enjoyed their work. Uh, next meeting suggestion, Christina. Yeah, 
Uh, I would like to have a meeting in June, but that probably will be more of a prep meeting for for ABLE. Uh, and I know we're going to plan the, you know, we'll have the July meeting at purchase, so I'm not sure about our next virtual meeting, what, what everyone's thinking. Um, does anyone have any suggestions? Are we better off kind of waiting until, you know, since summer's tough for people, kind of just planning one now for mm -hmm. end of August or early September? What does the group think? we keep the ideas flowing on Facebook? We certainly have such a critical mass there. Um, it'd be nice to, I mean, I think we're almost up to 90 members there. So it'd be great to hear from some of those people when, when sessions might be helpful. Um, we certainly don't mind playing the meetings, but we just want to make sure that it's convenient for people. Uh, so it would be great to share, share more student showcases. I think this was a great format mm -hmm. for doing it, but we, it'd be good to hear from everyone who came today about what you think about it, if there's other ways to get students involved. Uh, more all the time. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. I'm glad Keith feels that way, especially since he was doing the heavy lifting here. That's great. Okay, well, we'll continue to talk on Facebook. And, you know, we could do our June, we could have a June meeting slash planning session. So during the planning for um, our presentation, we could also kind of uh, just talk about the meeting plan for the upcoming year and maybe lay out a calendar that would. Uh, extend throughout the year of when meetings might be, maybe that would help, uh, as well as topics or themes for each of the meetings and kind of discuss how we want to include the student showcases if we want that to be, kind of include some stu student samples every time or have that just be at key times during the year. And uh, with that, I think we'll end. I hope everyone has a wonderful, uh, wonderful rest of the day. Thanks for taking time out to uh, participate today. Take care, everyone.